गाइस तो वेलकम टू द डे टू रिव्यू ऑफ द थर्ड टेस्ट मैच बिटवीन इंडिया एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया एट द गैबा एंड डे वन वाज मोस्टली वॉश्ड आउट बट सो इट वाज इफेक्टिवली द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द टेस्ट मैच बट सो ओवरऑल ऑस्ट्रेलिया हैव हैड अ प्रीटी डोमिनेटिंग डे आई मीन दे मोर ऑर लेस डोमिनेटेड एवरी सेशन ऑफ द दिस लाइक टेस्ट मैच सो फार and uh, steve smith back in form like back in form we have to see the next innings but like looks pretty decent right now got, got his uh, 33rd test century and along with that uh, travis said doing the usual business against india i mean uh, 152 uh, it's pretty much similar to the adelaide knock pretty dominant and uh, things not looking that well for india uh, so uh, australia currently are 400 plus for 7 wickets down and uh, tomorrow morning like india have to try to knock over the uh, tail as soon as possible and uh, grind it out basically because it's not all doom and gloom for india because there's some weather around as per the news in gaba and uh, so if india can like bat properly tomorrow the whole day can grind it out and not have a, a mini collapse or something like that so there are the chances of rain affected sessions on uh, like all the remaining days actually so especially so on day 4 and day 5 so you need to use that to their advantage like going into the mcg and stg and uh, hello and uh, so overall uh, i think this is uh, not been a very uh, what will i say not it's, it's been a very uh, abject performance from indian bowlers apart from jaspreet bumrah we are la- really lacking imagination from the captain uh, regarding the field placements and uh, everywhere he is very reactive i mean uh, lacks a lot of patience i feel for the red ball game uh, and uh, uh, nothing really to add uh, it's it's a really sad day for like india today uh, so pranav so what are your overall uh, thoughts on today's play so where do you think it all went wrong i think uh, if we take it session by session Mm-hmm. um the first session belonged to india perhaps because uh, before i dive in it's good to be back thanks to rushab for us right. uh while i was away but yeah so so the first session belonged to india they picked up three wickets um had a very decent session three for 76 uh, in about 20 22 overs is is quite decent from there i think india started missing the tricks by I don't know why Rohit bowled Jadeja uh, to Travis Head, and he was taken for cleaners. Still, he was persisting with Jadeja. I, I seriously don't understand the uh, tactics behind that uh, that thinking. Um, Akash Deep was fairly unlucky, I felt, because he he really bowled well. Uh, you know, uh, again, I think he was under bowled. Um, when the partnership was going i thought he had a bold a couple of couple of overs so the main problem that i see with with rohit as a captain is that he sticks to just one plan for it to work which is which is not ideal in overseas conditions in india it might work because you have some legendary spinners in ashwin and jadeja mm-hmm. but in overseas conditions when you have a transitioning side when you have somebody like akash deep as your third seamer nitish kumar ready as your fourth seamer but potentially you have to you know use them well so that they live up to the challenge and i think uh, rohit has has not done that well because if you look at perth uh, bumrah was on cue with how uh, he was using the bowlers he was just giving them uh, four five six over spells mm-hmm. and not over bowling himself and the other bowlers so that you know you you're not letting the batter settle against one sort of a bowler because i remember that uh, you know jadeja and i think from the other end siraj was bowling quite a bit then siraj broke down akash deep was bowling quite a bit one end jadeja was keeping on and on and on i don't i don't understand that tactic at all uh, but yeah i think after that wicketless session for 100 100 out runs bumrah just came out of nowhere with the new ball to pick up three wickets uh is just an absolute beast i mean it's it's just bumra and others there's there's a difference between ground and and earth uh, sorry ground and sky uh, when when it comes to bumra and the other bowlers and that's that's quite expected as well because um you know you you can't always rely on somebody like bumra to pick up wickets because you need to uh, you need to 
make sure that his workload is ideal. We'll also take a look at his numbers this series. Um, look at those numbers. 79 overs, 17 right. wickets at an average of 12.8. It's just the third test. I mean, striking at once in every 28 balls. That's like, what? Six, four, once in every four and a half overs? That's, yeah. I mean, amazing. I think first test as a captain, you just thrash Australia by 295 runs. Still, I mean, the next best wicket taker is 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 Mitchell Stark. I mean, that's that's the difference, right? Because after that comes, you know, Mohamed Siraj and Josh Hazelwood mm -hmm. and others. But that's that's the sort of class that uh, Bumrah has shown in this tour of Australia because I think he's grown into a fabulous bowler. Uh, red ball cricket, especially he. I was I was reading uh, Arshridhar's book. Uh, the other day, where in the last Border Gavaskar Trophy, he had a situation where, uh, or not the last one, I think the previous one, uh, okay. where they had a situation where it was it was about to go for a draw, um, and he he was having a chat with Bharat Arun, saying, "Aji, let's let's let me bowl slow. I mean, I'll just take out the overs shot." And then when uh, Bharat Arun told him that. You know, there could be a psychological effect of, of doing that because then the next time when the batters face you, they'll say, oh, I've played him out well. I have the confidence of doing well. And he took it personally and bowled an absolute peach of spell. So that's how he's grown as a bowler. I'm, I'm just citing an example just because I, I remembered that example. And to pick up 17 wickets, I mean, 17 wickets is, is quite a lot because... In the first test itself, it's because of him that we won that uh, game by such a big margin. Obviously, credit to KL Rahul and Nishas Vijayaswal. But yeah, I mean, incredible numbers. I can just keep on going about him, but it's just about the others stepping up. And I think India have their task cut out tomorrow. Just get Australia under 420, 430, and then just, just bat. Just hope that, that it rains enough and and maybe it ends in a draw even if it doesn't i mean tomorrow is day three so you you bat about six six and a half sessions at about four four runs and over then you i mean I, i'm not expecting india to get close to 420 anyways because then you you're thinking about a lead definitely not then get to 350 360 uh, probably there's a way back to the bowlers and then you're chasing a modest total of 120, 130 on day 5. Something of that sort, if it's possible, then who knows. I mean, just giving a hindsight situation. But yeah. it, it was it was an average day for India. But if not for that Bumrah burst, India would have been in a very bad right. position by the end of the day. So, I think it's in Australia's favour at the moment at 60-40. But... India is not far too behind it. It all depends on what happens in the morning session tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, so if we uh, see India's bowling options in this test match, so basically I think uh, the fourth and fifth options, Jadeja and uh, Nitesh Reddy kind of went for like 140 odd or something of that sort of amount of runs with not that many overs. So I think that containing job of a fourth or fifth bowler, be it Jadeja or Nitesh Reddy, I mean, that was lacking. And we are kind of expecting Jaspreet Bumrah to be the enforcer as well as the containing bowler. It's like asking a lot out of him, as you like as you said also. So he's been delivering, but you can't just like always give the ball to Bumrah and ask for a wicket and everything you ask for. So that at a, after a certain point of time, he will his legs will also give up. So it's uh, it's incredibly harsh on the man to do that. So that kind of begs the question. Uh, so let's come to Rohit Sharma's captaincy. So there have been multiple talks about it uh, in pre in the previous test match as well, and also spe specifically now. Uh, so uh, there was a sequence. What I saw was uh, also like Mohammad Siraj needs to be criticized a bit. So uh, the field was not set for a short pitch delivery ploy, but kind of Siraj banged it in. Uh, Travis had played the upper cut, and I, I think after a few deliveries, when there was a third one. Then Mohammad uh, Siraj did not bowl the short ball in that over anyway. So I think there's a 
lack of communication and understanding between the captain and what the bowlers want and i don't think they are always on the same page and it's it's almost like rohit sharma is so reactive like when a, like when travis said plays the uppercut it goes to four he puts a fielder there like he kind of chases the ball all the time so uh, and uh, it's uh, turning out to be a very uh, what do i say pretty ordinary like uh, test legacy for rohit sharma as a skipper and also now his uh, test batting is under the scanner and i think this test match like this innings is perhaps the most crucial for rohit sharma the batter as well because uh, i mean the it's uh, everybody is up and about it's i think it's high time rohit sharma pr- proves his uh, pr- uh, every everyone wrong and gets us a decent score i think at least a good knock is due long time for him and i think he's going to come in the middle order so and it, it looks a decent pitch it's not it's not a like a green mamba or like very uneven kind of a pitch it looks a pretty true bounce wicket obviously some some there is some amount of seam movement and some like uh, bouncing up a bit but i think it's mostly a new ball cricket wicket and uh, as we saw today once if if india can somehow like survive the 30 35 overs then i think they should be able to feel more comfortable like uh, f- uh, for the rest of the overs so overall so if we look at the rohit sharma and the batting to come tomorrow from india's perspective like what are your thoughts on him so what if rohit sharma fails to, uh, in the gaba test do you do you feel india should take a drastic step in the at the mcg or do you like give him the entire test uh, test series as a like captain skipper because uh, we have to remember india is coming back of a 3-0 home uh, like defeat to new zealand as well it's not just a single event which is happening and also the batting i mean there is some depth here like jadeja and nitish reddy at, at the low, lower order so there is some depth it's not all doom and gloom in the batting so let's i think a lot of answers uh, are going to be answered tomorrow i think tomorrow is a very very crucial day from indian cricket's perspective not only from the series perspective so your take on this yeah go on i think uh, rohit as a captain in test cricket is is quite defensive i mean there's there are no two ways about it because uh it's it's because the previous captain was so aggressive that we are looking at at it this way but i think if you if you take a look at instances where we are put under the pump uh let's take the home series or the away series or the wtc final it's not been very you know proactive captaincy from rohit and and i agree with you that it's it's sort of coming uh, as as a defensive option as a non sync between the bowlers and and the captain but mm-hmm. primarily i feel there's no um, need of changing anything at the moment because uh, you know mid series if you change something then it affects the confidence of the batter and and i'm primarily focused on rohit the batter than rohit uh, you know the captain obviously captain matters i'm not saying he doesn't matter but uh, what i'm trying to point out here is that you know assuming that we lose or at best draw this test or even go on to win this whatever the result uh we are looking at at what the results are we are not just look you know we need to look at how the team is shaping up at the moment because the problem is that the previous regime had a lot of focus on the on the limited overs cricket and post ishant and umesh yadav we have not been able to groom enough pacers uh, just so that i mean if you go back to the virat shastri era you had someone like rahul dravid in the nca pumping up players because there was a sync between the senior management and the nca so so as to ensure your cricket grows enough because uh, you know obviously you you had that that the other arm of of IPL where you, know, you identify talents but obviously red ball game is is very different to what t20 cricket is right. but then now with, with the IPL having a huge impact in terms of batting sort of i feel that the talent of red ball cricket is diminishing and that's where i feel that ranji cricket standards have to go up because you know in ipl you're scoring 200 250 runs for fun i think my own team sunrisers hyderabad chased 160 in 10 overs uh that's where the standards are at the moment in terms of batting and and that's what the crowd likes so i'm not blaming anyone at all in this case 
but when it comes to red ball cricket and india is primarily focused on red ball cricket they know how to come back from difficult situations you have to have enough backup talent uh, to support the current squad that's there because uh, there are a couple of problems that i see one is that nobody is given a very long run in this setup uh, one great example is kl rahul because he was earlier opening uh, he mm-hmm. was dropped based on form then came back on middle order then again he was dropped based on form then now he's a, he's a makeshift opener then now rohit shifts down for him so that the opening pair can sustain itself although i am i am an advocate for the opening pair that works just stick with that um but my problem is the lack of consistency in the in the middle order because because of our batting uh, the bowling looks quite astonishing if i can put it that way because uh if if you look at what happened in the previous test it's because our batting did not perform we had to drop ashwin and nitish uh, sorry harshit rana from this test which is not at all ideal because if you look at the collective uh, result of the test it's because of our batting that didn't turn up so potentially you could drop a batter and who is that batter nobody knows so the problem is that whenever you lose a test whenever you want to make a change you might call this a tactical change saying look kya has bound so i can get uh, you know akashdeep uh, i wanted some batting so we got jadeja but that's the problem right you don't have consistency you don't have enough consistency in saying look ashwin i will give you five tests irrespective of what the results are or washington sundar for that matter because you played him in the first test for his batting mm. and then all of a sudden you realize okay i need ashwin's spin bowling more uh, and then all of a sudden you realize no i need jadeja's batting more uh, so uh, this musical chair is is a little bit of a problem uh, and again rohit not scoring runs is not helping at all so that's the problem right your batters fail the eventual reaction is on the bowlers there is no consistency in the bowling unit so if you look at the previous border gavaskar trophy which we won 2 1 miraculously i i'll i'll still call it a miracle because that that happened in every, once in a decade yeah. uh you had the similar sort of bowling unit for at least four tests or rather the three tests because once shami went out you had umesh yadav i think mohammad siraj made his debut uh, mm-hmm. and in melbourne from from adelaide he is a similar kind of bowler not exactly to shami but he was young enough he had played a lot of india a games to come into the setup now if you look at uh, you know the current bowling lineup harshit rana has not played enough a games uh, you know he was in fact not sent to the a tour in australia for some bizarre reasons i don't know why prasit krishna has played india a games but he is coming off an injury Siraj's form has been a concern but so Akashdeep has been doing well in indian conditions and he bowls exceptionally well to the left handers to his credit so there are certain problems and of course the batting unit there are a few elephants in the room that we don't need to name obviously kohli got a century in the second innings of the first test so yeah you he looked in decent touch in in both the innings in the pink ball test although i couldn't watch the entire test because of uh, the vacation so rohit i did, i don't know what's wrong with him but yeah it's it's the sort of lunging out that happens with with the with the ball but yeah that's that's pink ball so you can just excuse him because he's just now down to red ball where gaba should help him so there are strings of problems and i think that's why we need to be a little patient as fans where this transitioning side will take some time to adapt and probably by the england tour again the problem is that ipl starts march 15th ends may may 15th uh the test series starts july uh, or june end i think after the wtc final okay. so do you have enough time to go and play some county games do you have enough time to go and play some uh you know england warm up games or whatever so that sort of thinking is missing that's that's what i i have a problem with 
uh, you know that sort of consistency is is missing when when you're taking decisions you have to ensure that the team's balance is ideal uh, you need to exploit the conditions well do you have the arsenal to you know master the conditions what do you do when you have a partnership building that's that's the biggest question that rohit needs to answer as a captain because it has happened multiple times even in south africa when david bendingham was batting with i don't remember the other name i think it was aiden markram where he got 100 they were clueless and that's why we lost the test because it was not that you know we looked apart in the test we could have still won the test if we had done better uh in the wtc final the short ball ploy came very late of course the coach was rabid back then and Paris Mambre, but again they were focused on limited overs so is it time to get a test specialist coaching staff i don't know uh, so there are a lot of questions but i will not jump the gun straight away in the middle of a test series i'd rather take a call close enough i know jaisha is is in uh, brisbane for the olympics one um, but yeah, enough said i think plenty of problems but at the moment the focus should be on batting enough batting long get yourself enough runs before the melbourne test because if this goes one one then the next two becomes little qualifier or, or, or quarter final yeah. uh, for the wtc final because south africa look to be a very great side at home so yeah i mean credit to australia for what they have done today but uh, i just seriously hope that india find a way to come back into the test after such intendulka nobody has hit a double hundred in in australia for india mm-hmm. i think dravid did uh, need to I check mean, but uh, who knows if the forecast shows rain but if there's no rain if the sun comes out you have a nice quickened wicket maybe you play out the first 20 overs and then start milking rounds yeah, that's that's all i could say but plenty of problems but is just play the waiting game at least for the series yeah and uh, so yeah so that's what what we had for today so just before signing off just one one thing i think uh, regarding rohit sharma's captaincy i think we need to realize that the team is going through a transition period uh, like if people are saying kohli would have done different i agree he would have been more imaginative as a skipper definitely test cricket would have been a very uh, like it's fun to watch with kohli around i mean it's i get that thing but Regardless of who is the captain is, when a cricket team is in transition, things are expected to go downhill for a few matches. But I just hope that the correct backups are getting produced, the correct words are being spread in the dressing room. And I think one of the major reasons is the COVID era. I mean, we saw in the in the Kohli Shastri era, the fast bowling Arsenal was kept pumping because of the Dravid and NCA and the direction which the coach and the captain wanted to go. They had a very strong narrative that fast bowling is a primary goal in Test cricket. But I feel that uh, like uh, the, in the uh, post-COVID era, there were not enough Ranji matches and also the India A tools have subsided a lot. Uh, and I think th- as a result of that, the exposure of the upcoming Pacers have reduced that much. And we don't have that much first-class experience also, as you said. I mean, if you look at this bowling attack, it's pretty inexperienced in Australian conditions. I mean, Harshit Rana, Akash, both of I just, them. I just, yeah, have, yeah. I just have one point to add on to what you're saying. I think uh, we have had enough comparisons of of Kohli, Rohit, what Kohli would have done as a skipper and all that nonsense. Uh, I don't seriously believe in in all that comparison because uh, whatever they're doing is for the side and it's it's not mm-hmm. it's not for themselves that they're playing for. Uh, so uh, the problem here is the lack of plans. Uh, again, I'm saying there's there's skill and skill is hundred out of hundred. For all the 16, 15, 16, or whatever the backups, including the backups, 20 guys are. I, and I'm hearing the backups are being released uh, from the side for yeah. Vijay Hazare. Yeah. So um, it's about the execution of the plans that you have. So uh, you have to understand Rohit is a limited over skipper. He's, he's not molded as a test skipper. That's, that's the problem. You know, you have to have that thinking of picking up 20 wickets in a test match. Um, 
because I was actually baffled at Akash Deep going around the wicket to Pat Cummins with a short leg in. That is not his natural game. And that's where I have a problem with Rohit as a captain because you have to think about wickets, but not in a bizarre way. When you can't, uh, you know, you can't force the bowler to change his thinking by putting a, a you know, flying slip at third or, or, a, or a very fine third man and then allow him to bowl short pitch deliveries onto his hip so that, you know, somebody like Travis Head or Usman Khawaja can pull that. Uh, so that's where I'm coming from. I think Rohit as a test skipper needs a little more guidance from somebody who thinks as a as a test captain. And I think that's Jasprit Bumrah is, is one person who thinks as a test cricketer or he values test cricket more. I'm not saying he doesn't value World Cups and, and ODIs and T20Is. He values every bit of cricket that he plays. But for me, that, that one test showed that how much he values test cricket, how much he takes pride in leading the side. So I think that's where, as a leadership group, they need to grow in confidence. And allow Rohit to grow as a skipper. I obviously know that he's 38, 39, whatever, 37. Uh, but yeah, the instinctive captaincy works in T20 cricket. And he's given up T20. So he needs to now think from a longer perspective how he can develop one skipper under him. Whoever mm -hmm. it is. Maybe Bumrah, Shubman Gil, Yashish Vijayaswad, whoever it is. And also think about how he can take this team forward because it is in a decline. There's there are no ways about it, but it has to come out of a decline because uh, we know the state when uh, Dravid, Lakshman, and Sachin retired, even Ganguly retired. We lost the Border Gavaskar Trophy 2000, uh, I think 11, 12, uh, 4 nil, uh, yeah, yeah. 14, 15, 4 nil, uh, or rather 3 nil. We draw. We drew one test, I think. I'm not sure. Rather, we we lost the when when Kohli took over, we lost four nil, and that's where the transformation came in. So we'll have to be very patient with this side because we are very result oriented when it comes to uh, as fans. And I would seriously urge all of us to be very patient and not think about the results because. I know it hurts when you lose 3-0 at home and then go on to lose Border Gavaskar Trophy after winning the first test. If at all it happens, I'm not saying it will happen. But then we as fans needs to be need to be very patient with this side because that's how the side is being built. And they have a very difficult task at hand to manage this side. And again, they're going to England after the IPL. So... It is a difficult time. I'm not saying it's easy enough to brush this aside. We can criticize, but not overdo it so that you know yeah. the entire team's morale is, is broken down. They can still come back in this test. They can still do well in this series to go on and win it 3-1 or 2-1 or whatever. So, yeah, just, just be with the side. That's, that's all I'd, I'd like to say. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's all what we had for today. So, tomorrow we are basically looking forward to some fight and grit from the Indian batting order. And uh, mostly some rain from India's perspective. Australia will want to go to one in, uh, to MCG. So, let's see how things shape up. So, we will cover tomorrow's day's play as well uh, after the day is done. If there is not much rain interruption and stuff. So, thanks for watching. Do comment in your thoughts about the day's plays, what India can do right. And what thoughts about Rohit Sharma's captaincy and all. So, yeah, see you again. Bye.